So over time, if we persevere with our decision-making strategy, honoring our congruency of how we're here to meet life and be exactly what life needs, no more, no less, being our own authority, what we do is we learn to observe in the deconditioning process the mind's stories, its shadow states, and then we gradually develop if we are walking walking in alignment with our design, the totality of the design, and then we have the ability to function from a nine-centered potential because this vehicle that we're in, nine-centered vehicle, is still under heavy mutation and we haven't been given the um, fullest expression of it because it's not time yet as a potential because it's still mutating, it's still gestating. Right here, Ra said, would often say that he was a door closer, closing of the door on inner truth to establish inner truth for nine-centered humans that can individuate the new nine-centered humans that are coming, ones who will be full-blown raves, what the voice called raves, Ra said. Those are going to operate in aware pentas, so very different story to operate in an aware penta, whereas right now we're not able to do that. We operate in unaware pentas. So in the unique experience of your personal integrity of being, the awareness of what you're here to be, a life that is beyond compare is going to be completely unique to you. So if you are completely and utterly unique, and you're playing out your big archetypal role, as we mentioned, big shoes, takes a while to get there, then we get to experience and express our specific particular purpose in life, the incarnation cross. And when you are a manifester, you'll experience it with peace. When you are a generator, you'll experience it with satisfaction. When you are a projector, you'll experience it with sweet success. And as a reflector, it would be surprise that you would experience as far as the frequency. Now, those words are not just signposts. Peace, satisfaction, success, surprise. They're not just signposts. They are the essence of the expression of your spirit, your spirit experiencing what it came here for. So you can always go back to whatever it is that you're focusing on. If it brings anger, then the shift needs to happen to come back to authority, be your own authority, and do things that are impactful for you and inform in order to impact so that you can initiate and manifest in a way that brings your peace or your joy or your initiation, what have you, whatever it is that's otherwise there in the design as keynotes because it's a holistic being that you are. So remember, This incarnation cross that I'm going to give you as something to process, you can take it, most people will, in the not self, in the beginning, will take it and say, okay, I'm here to be this, I've got my purpose, especially if you're an undefined G-center or high, like me, unconsciously defined G-center, it can be really easy to over-identify and go, okay, here's my goal. This is what I'm going to be. I've got to do all this to reach my goal because the mind will take that and run with it as instructions. So don't let the mind do that. Remember, mind wants to have a goal. It wants to have a purpose. And it loves to have uh, this sense of, you know, continuity or immortality is a better word that it can imagine it will allow us to live beyond the grave. You could say a lasting legacy. This is especially true if you're very tribal. What's my legacy? What's my mark on the world? So this purpose of your incarnative cross in your life's work is not for imagining what could be. It is for experiencing moment by moment as you move through life. So this life is for you to wake up to recognizing or self-realizing what it's like to be an experiment of consciousness in form or an expression of consciousness while embodied. We as human beings who are nine centered and as we know studying human design, you can see we are a binary consciousness. We are here to learn to be conscious of both body, the design and mind, the personality, not as a goal, but as an in the now experience of being awake 
this passenger, your mind, and its witnessing capacity. It speaks through the personality, but it is not the personality crystal. There's a huge difference between being a passenger, observing that body-mind integration of the experience of being alive, and the mind broadcasting or imagining, picturing into the future what the experience should be, what it'll bring, what it could be, interpreting what might be, see how we're, we're pulled into the future, you know? Imagination is built on past experiences. So we're taking our past realities, jerry-rigging it together and trying to, okay, I'm going to be this, you know, and finding some measure of certainty or security in that because now I've got my purpose. So just, I, I did all this to be very careful about what I'm about to give you so that you don't glom onto it and misidentify and then miss what is actually there in the present moment. Okay, <laughs> I hope that that makes sense. All right, so this incarnation cross that we're about to go into with each of you, this is raw, as we can see, we split it apart, personality and design, and there's 70% of who he was. The incarnation cross gives us the trajectory or the movement in space of our magnetic monopole. This is that which holds us together, as Ra would say, in the illusion of our separateness from the totality, bringing us together to be able to experience life because personality by itself and body by itself is not alive. It's not able to experience the full awareness and flowering of a nine-centered human. So there's a maturation process that we all go through. It is taking in through the openness what we've learned about in this life and then the specific wisdom that we've gathered helps us build our outer authority, our expression of outer authority. Outer authority, when it comes to all of us, each of us, we all have it. But it doesn't come unless we have our specific individual expression of it. So we can't force, we can't push. It's coming from a unique experience of our individual life. And when you have your incarnative cross purpose lived through you, breathed through you, and you're giving your unique differentiated perspective, what Ra calls outer authority, he would equate to a nine-centered human's enlightenment. All of us have it. It's natural. It's organic. It's there. And it's there for specific people. Remember at the beginning we said that incarnation crosses were all fractals here to connect with specific others. We're not all here for everybody. We're here for very specific people. That's especially true if you've got a left angle profile. 